In the land where I was born, there are no women seeking justice. Justice for birth mother, O、oh、Lord, hear my prayer. Thank you for tuning into Justice for Birth Mothers. My name is Anna Kavna, co-founder and convener to the Alliance of Birth Mothers Campaigning for Justice, Ireland's largest non-TUSLA funded group advocating on behalf of birth mothers in difficulty with TUSLA, the Gardaí, and the Family Court. The mothers that we support are bound by the in-camera rule, which means they could be jailed for speaking outside the Family Court about what's happening to them. To overcome the silencing of these birth mothers and give them a voice, I interviewed twenty of them that I've personally come to know since our group was formed in 2019. They volunteered to describe their experiences in great detail to let the world know about the ongoing state abuse of mothers and children in Ireland. The voices you're about to hear are the voices of the women who offered to read the transcripts of what was said to me. I want to warn you in advance that you will probably be disturbed by what you're about to hear. This podcast deals with the Gardaí. To begin, lead researcher for the Alliance of Birth Mothers Campaigning for Justice, Michelle Monahan, tells us now about the role of the Gardaí in relation to child welfare. Section 12 is the principal legal mechanism through which Angarda Siakona performs its child protection function. The section authorizes a Garda member to remove a child from the care of his or her family or a person acting in loco parentis, in circumstances where that Garda believes there is an immediate and serious risk to the health or welfare of a child, and where that Garda also believes it would not be sufficient for the protection of the child from such immediate and serious risk to await the making of an application. For an emergency care order by the Child and Family Agency under Section 13, Section 12 grants members of Angarda Siakona exceptional powers to enter any place without warrant and remove a child to safety. Exercise of this power is not dependent on prior authorization of a court, a member of the judiciary, or any other Garda member. Section 12 is a power exercisable on the judgment of the individual Garda faced with what he or she believes to be a serious and urgent. Child protection risk. Tusla used Roseanne's partner's mental health difficulties as the excuse to take her children from her and place them in state care. She has spent almost a decade trying to get her children home. Tusla now acknowledges that she's a loving, kind mother with no difficulties in relation to her parenting skills and. Parenting capacity, but they are saying that the children are too settled in their placements to bring them home. It will be too unsettling for them. Any time I challenge the social workers and I went to the guardie to make a report because some of their behaviour is actually criminal. I find that some of the guardie will target you. I was helping out another woman who was in the same boat as myself. And she was staying with me for a little while, and the guardie raided my house, took my phone and computer. They kept it for a year and then returned it. It was just the hardship of it. I mean, this is why I don't help anyone any more because the guards do target you. I was told by one of them, and he was a nice guard. He said some guards target women because some of the guards are married to social workers, and then it clicked with me. It's totally corrupt. A totally corrupt system, and it shouldn't be allowed. Like they have no right to come to your door if you have done nothing wrong, but the social workers make up lies and they come to you and they give you a caution. They come down and say, "We're giving you a caution when you're supposed to have said such and such." They just take the social workers' word for it. I find it very vindictive, an awful experience with the guardy. I'm not saying that they're all the same. There is a kindness to some of them, but there's a lot of them I find very malicious, very, very malicious. Look into your mother's face. No one else can take her place. Justice for birth, 
Holly was in a relationship where there was domestic violence and coercive control. When the relationship ended, her children's father began making malicious allegations against her that eventually resulted in Tusla removing her children and placing them in care. I've had like mixed experiences with them. My son had friction burns on his body when he came home from Axis. I didn't do anything about it the first time, but when it happened the second time, I started to have concerns. My son's behavior was starting to change. So then I just point blank asked him, I said, did daddy hurt you? Did daddy do this? And he said, yes, daddy did. My ex admitted in a text message that he did it. I went to my local guard station to report this. The guard didn't take me seriously. He refused to listen to anything I had to say. He basically brushed me off, saying that I was basically a vindictive spouse. Another time, my ex contacted the guard, saying that the children were missing and that I was mentally ill. The guard, in this case, she, she was amazing. She was absolutely lovely. She was kind. She was absolutely lovely. I explained to her that he was being malicious and that I had text messages to prove it. She was amazing. I submitted a GDPR request to the guards and I'm waiting on that to come back. Another guard came to the house last month because my ex basically is telling everyone in the community that I'm schizophrenic bipolar and have multiple personality disorder. He told the guardie this and had the guardie come out alleging that I was mentally ill again. So I'm hoping we can get something sorted when I get my file. My ex is basically using the guardie to harass me by making all these malicious false reports. One song you don't want to hear is the cry of a mother and her child taken from her. Just as for birth mothers, oh Lord, hear my prayer. When Josephine was pregnant, the relationship with her partner broke down and she ended up parenting on her own. When her child was a year old, the child's father went to court in order to get access and the court granted him supervised access to the child. So basically he had access and for several months it was supervised. And then after that, as soon as it became unsupervised, we just noticed things like just like a pattern of things that like she was often sick after access and diarrhea and things like that. And so we eventually started to make a note of all that kind of thing. I did say it to him, but he didn't give any real kind of an explanation for it. And so then we just started noticing as the months went by, it was actually more my mother that noticed things with her behaviour. Her behaviour was just unusual, very peculiar and concerning. And so we took her to a child psychologist and we spoke to the child psychologist and the child psychologist, based on the information that me and my mother were saying, said that she believed that there were, there could be a possibility that the behaviour was sexualized. So she advised us to document everything. Eventually we went to the guards and we went also to Tusla. The guards didn't speak to him for several months. At this stage, my daughter was only a toddler and she couldn't really tell us anything. It was her behaviour that was concerning. My mother and I went back to the guards to update her statement. The guard literally turned us away. I mean, these statements were very detailed. They were documented so well and timed and dated and so specific. All he did was procrastinate and come up with all kinds of excuses why he didn't want to interview my child's father or any other members of his family for that matter. He just didn't take it seriously at all and fobbed us off. Ireland, Mother Ireland, let not the sins of the father be visited on these children. Just as for birth, Mother, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Ireland's former Special Rapporteur on Child Protection, Dr Geoffrey Shannon, conducted an audit of the use of Section 12 of the Child Care Act by Ungarda Siakona and published his findings in January 2017. His audit found inadequacies in the operation of the Garda Pulse system, including numerous gaps, 
flaws and variations in the data captured and saved. The audit's findings clearly show there is no standard case in which a child is removed under Section 12. It depends on the circumstances. The audit suggests that exercising Section 12 removal of children is a rare occurrence for the average member of Angartha Siakona. A further finding in the audit is that there is little or no formal training of new Gartha recruits in relation to child protection. The overwhelming majority of current serving members of Angartha Siakona have received no such training. The audit evaluated the nature of interagency communication between Tusla and the Gardaí and found poor and limited levels of interagency cooperation and coordination between them, falling far short of international best practice. He found that Tusla did not provide feedback or updates to Garda members following the handover of children to Tusla's care. The audit also found that the Garda station is used as the de facto initial place of safety for children removed under Section 12. Garthi, who were interviewed, described a Gartha station as a completely inappropriate and unsafe environment for children. The provision, or lack of out-of-hours social worker services by Tusla, was also the subject of considerable criticism from Gartha respondents. Where there was an out-of-hours Tusla social worker service available, Gartha respondents suggested it is systematically inadequate as it is often under-resourced and cannot facilitate access to case files on particular children. The audit found that Tusla rely on private foster care services as the de facto official out-of-hours child protection service and there is a pattern of them refusing to organise placements for children with challenging behaviour. In these cases where placements were refused by private providers, there was no other agency available out-of-hours to deal with these children according to Shannon. Dr Shannon was made a circuit court judge last March. Jana is a professional lady living and working in Ireland for more than 20 years. Jana claims that the father of her child abandoned her as soon as he found out that she was pregnant. She ended up parenting on her own. Eventually, it came to light that her daughter had learning difficulties and was on the autism spectrum, and she began missing days from school. Social workers arrived for the very first time at her house and decided that Jana had mental health difficulties and they sent for an ambulance to have her brought to the local hospital and they took her child. Jana was discharged from the hospital within a couple of hours and when she ran home, her child was gone and she had no idea where she was. It was many months before she discovered that the child was with her father. I can only say that there is absolutely no point in asking the guardy for help. There is absolutely no point because when my daughter was taken away and I couldn't get any kind of documentation regarding courts, that there is any kind of court order to take my child, I asked the guardy for help. The guardy, they they didn't do a thing. There was one guard who actually was nearly shouting at me, what do you want? What do you want me to do? Go and talk to Tesla. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm asking for help because if I don't know anything, I have no information. She's somewhere where I don't know where she is. For me, it's abduction because I don't know where my daughter is. The guardy will not help. They don't want to get involved. And I actually read quite a few articles that even with a court order, if the non-custodial parent is keeping the baby, keeping the child, they will still not do anything because the minute they hear Tesla need, they back off the back away. You are on your own. There was absolutely no point in going to the guardy. It was a waste of time. They think that you are a nobody because this is how I felt when I went to the station with a request to get my daughter back. Because, to be quite honest, they are linked. So whatever Tusla has in their system, they have access to it because it's legal. He could have He could have checked the system and tell me that, yeah, let's say there was an ex parte court case, but they don't want to deal with us. They just don't want to deal with it because we are straight away judged that if our kid was taken away, we are trash. 
My children have been taken by the force of law and order in Ireland, holy Ireland. Justice for both mothers, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Clara claims that she has been subjected to a horrific campaign of Garda intimidation and harassment for more than a decade since she arrived in Ireland for her safety, having testified against a dangerous criminal in the court in the UK. Shortly after she arrived in Ireland, the Garda came to her isolated rural homestead looking for passports. They removed her children on three separate occasions and it has been established that the children have at times been removed illegally. She's still being subjected to harassment and intimidation from the Gardaí. Recently, after she lodged papers in the Supreme Court naming the Garda Commissioner, when she returned home on the train, there were two Gardaí waiting for her in the station where she claims they harassed her and questioned her about her movements. Her daughter, too, has been subjected to Gartha harassment. Recently, they broke down the door of her apartment and they arrested her under the Mental Health Act and brought her to hospital. She was discharged a couple of hours later. Then, a fortnight later, a repeat performance she was arrested again under the Mental Health Act and brought to hospital and she was discharged shortly after she arrived in the hospital. My children were taken from me three times, always by the Gardaí. I never had a social worker come to my door to take my children. It's been the guards that have taken my daughters. The first occasion the guards detained me for a supposed motoring offence. And whilst I was detained for a motoring offence, which I don't believe has anything to do with my parental ability, they then went to the children's schools and took them out of school. And the school staff just handed them over without any question. I asked them afterwards, like, did you ask the guards what they were doing or where was I? They said no. As soon as they said they wanted the children, we just handed them over. It's unbelievable. I didn't know how to appeal, but I certainly found out. I appealed to the circuit court. And in the circuit court, the judge heard the evidence and declared that the children had to be given back to me that day by 4 p.m. He said this was just about a car issue. The barrister for Tusla was not able to give the judge any evidence of the children of child protection issues, even though the judge asked him four different times for the evidence. There was no child protection issues. That second time that the guardy took my children, they detained me again. Months later, they admitted that I was detained in error. The Gardaí came to my house and they arrested me and brought me to the station and they took my children to a different station and then they were given to strangers. I've since had it confirmed that I was detained in error. That's a pretty big error. I never got an apology for this error, even though I tried and tried to get an apology. This time they held on to my eldest daughter and they gave me the two little ones back. My eldest daughter ran away from the foster home. So when they eventually caught up with her, they took her to a Garda station and they handed her over to two Slis social workers. Because they had the oldest child, they then targeted the younger ones and took them from school. Five guards surrounded my car in the school playground with all the friends and the family of my children watching on in the school playground at pickup time. Five guards surrounding my car and stopping me getting out of my car and making my daughters cry making my children cry. They were fine before that happened. And then, as soon as that happened, they were sobbing. It was terrible, just terrible. And the guards took them away and everyone was looking and they were sobbing and sobbing. Motherhood is hard, support the mother. The mother and the child together. Do not tear this love asunder. Support, respect the mother. Justice for birth mother, oh Lord, 
When Sophie reported that her daughter was sexually abused by her father, the matter ended up in the family court. A court expert was appointed. He accused Sophie of parental alienation and made a recommendation to the court that custody of the children be handed over to the father and that Sophie be denied access to her children. Sophie has not seen her children since early 2022. The day after my daughter was sexually assaulted by her father, we went down to the Gardaí. We were let down. I felt they didn't do anything to help me or my daughter. They completely and totally failed to investigate what happened. They tried to accuse me and accuse my daughter of telling lies. And when the court ordered that the children were to be handed off to their father, his legal, legal team contacted the school immediately after the court and told them that they were to contact the guards. The guards arrived at the school and my children were taken out screaming out of the classroom and the guardie helped their father to drag them to the car and force them into his car. They provided him with a guard escort to his house and they helped him to force the children into the house against their will. The reason why I can say this is because I was told all of this two days later by a social worker who contacted me to say she was concerned that the children were not eating. Since then, I've been treated extremely badly by the local guardie. I'm ignored as the mother of my children. When things have happened to my children, like when they have run away, I have not been contacted as their legal guardian. My children attempted to escape from their father. I was told by a concerned person that the children had run away. The court order states I cannot make any kind of contact with my children. If I break that court order, I'll be put in jail. I went to the guardian and I told them who I was. I told them who my children were and I told them what I had heard. When I said I just wanted to know were the children OK, that's all. I, I just want to know. I, I don't. I won't break any rules. I'm not asking to see them. I would just like you to tell me that my children are OK. And a guard stood in the, t in the station and he roared at me that I must be a drug addict or an alcoholic to have had my children remove me. And I told him I was neither, that I was a victim of domestic abuse and coercive control and that I didn't need to be shouted at. I just wanted to know if he could please help find out for me if my children were OK and he refused. I went to several different guard stations that evening before I eventually find one guard who was normal, who realised I had just a simple request and he made a phone call for me. He asked me to wait and he came back and he said, yes, the children were OK. They're back with the father now. He claims they're OK. My local guard, I think, are appalling. They are the guard who facilitated the forced removal of children from their school against their wishes. And since then, they've nothing but they've done nothing but treat me with absolute disdain. I'm a woman. I'm a mother. I'm a law-abiding woman. I've never broken the law. I've never been involved with the Gardaí. I, I hold a professional position of power. I'm very well respected in my work career. I'm trusted in my work career. I'm trusted with my children in my career, hundreds of them. But yes, my own children are removed from me. And the Gardaí don't see that that raises a red flag. The Gardaí is saying that the family law courts must have done this for a reason. And despite me trying to explain over and over again that the family law court only listened to an expert and that I needed a little bit of safety and protection, the Gardaí do nothing. I phoned them in the middle of the night when their father was outside my house putting me in fear and the Gardaí didn't even put, turn up. They took a statement from my daughter when she was sexually assaulted by her father and they said they sent a file to the DPP and it came back saying there wasn't enough ev evidence to prosecute him. So the word of the child, the word of the counsellors, the word of a mother, a recording of admission from the man who did this, that's not enough for the Gardaí. I've had to fight so hard for a long time to get them to take a statement for my daughter. They initially wanted to do nothing, but I fought so hard it was almost like they took the statement to shut me up so that they could say that they took this statement from her. And I, I myself made a course of control statement. And when I first went to the Gardaí, the Gardaí station and requested to make a statement, I was actually denied my statement being taken and I was sent away. A domestic violence support group that I'm with then contacted the Gardaí and they got in touch with me and their attitude was, oh, OK, so go on, make your statement. And that statement is still with the DPP under consideration. I don't know why it's taking so long, but it's still there with the DPP. I would never, ever call the Gardaí for help again because they actually just made it worse. The Gardaí themselves, they have no power at all where family law is concerned, civil law. Either of these things, they have no power. However, they'll try and inflict fear when they can. And they pick and choose. You can get a lazy guard who won't even acknowledge what's happening in front of them. So I think the guard are useless, absolutely useless. And the fact that they involve themselves in a civil matter 
in family law where they forcibly remove children, I think they should be ashamed of themselves. One song you don't want to hear is the cry of the mother and her child taken from her. Justice for birth mothers, oh Lord, hear my prayer. There's evidence that very little has changed in the six years since the publication of Geoffrey Shannon's audit of the use of Section 12 of the Child Care Act by Angarda Siakona in 2017. Speaking in the Dáil earlier this year, on Thursday the 4th of May, former social worker Deputy Patrick Costello made the following remarks. There are many continuing failures. From speaking to frontline social workers, I learnt that the specialist portal that is exclusively for Angarda Siakona to report concerns to TUSLA is rarely used or inconsistently used depending on the area. Specialist interviewers within TUSLA who are social workers trained to conduct forensic interviews carried out jointly with Gardaí that can be used as evidence through a video system are not being used. We are spending money on training these people but are not using them and many of them are leaving TUSLA. There is inconsistency around the country in areas of practice. A joint protocol of working between Angarda Siakona and TUSA calls for annual reviews. This is not happening. There is a way forward and a way to get them working together, namely an element of co-location. Seconding duty social workers to the Divisional Protective Services units means they automatically work together from the beginning. We have seen from the Section 12 audit conducted in Tusla that there can be strong relationships between Gardaí and social workers that improve outcomes for people receiving support from Tusla. But again, these are ad hoc and inconsistent. These come up because people are working together. But if social workers and Gardaí are transferred, the structural arrangements are not there to ensure interagency work. This is why we need co-location and the secondment of duty social workers to the Divisional Protective Services Units so that they can work together and sit at the same desk, in the same office, in the same porta cabin. This will automatically improve and create better structures. Maeve is another mother who, like Sophie, reported that her daughter had been sexually abused by her father. This resulted in her children being temporarily put into state care. But fortunately, unlike Sophie, Maeve succeeded in getting her children brought home to her. The guards were not supportive in relation to the crimes against myself and my children by my ex-partner. And I've had a lot of guards that I recorded that came to the house for no reason only just to be a nuisance, I suppose. There's definitely one room for victims of domestic violence and another rule for the perpetrators. And I've had a heavy hand of the guards when a breach of the safe reorder would happen. And they would come to the house and they would laugh and they would say a judge would laugh me out of court and I would say, the order is mine, guard. You are here to facilitate it. And the judge makes that decision. But they just laugh. So basically, they haven't been supportive. They weren't supportive when my daughter made a sexual abuse disclosure. The guard was a female guard and she actually laughed at me. When I was making a statement, she was on the phone, leaving the room, coming in and out and being very blasé about it. She wasn't really giving me much attention. One guard falsified everything when I made a statement and he did it right in front of me. The guards used coercive control to make me hand over my bank accounts, all my medical history to give to the perpetrator. Ireland, Mother Ireland, let not the sins of the father be visited on these children. Justice for birth, Mother, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Erica is a third mother who got into difficulties when she reported child sex abuse. She's currently appealing a circuit court judgment that the custody of the children is to be given to the father and she is to be denied access to them. A court expert made a report for the court stating 
that she is guilty of parental alienation and the recommendation is that she shouldn't be allowed to see her children. The children's father has made so many false allegations against me that have been investigated by the Gardaí and every time it was found that the allegations were fictitious. I was assaulted at a handover with him one time, I rang Tusla. They didn't seem concerned and said, well, if there's an issue, just report it to the guards. I did report it to the guards. The guard recommended that access should be under CCTV to protect me. Tusla said they had no concerns for my safety and would not recommend that the access be changed so the handover would be under CCTV. Look into your mother's face No one else can take her place Just as for birth, mother Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Danielle was a victim of domestic violence and coercive control. Her husband did everything he possibly could to try and have her committed to a mental hospital, making claims that Danielle was mentally ill. He even succeeded in convincing some members of her family and indeed some professionals as well. I do feel there's some very good guards out there. There's some very good ones. And there's also some very bad ones who seem to have an excuse for basically not doing their job. And they'll always find some sort of an excuse, maybe not to take your complaint or not to take it seriously. And, you know, sometimes the excuses might be, well, it's not an excuse, but it's kind of a rationale like, you're saying this because you are divorcing him. That's the kind of attitude you get instead of a criminal case against him or coercive control or false imprisonment, etc., etc. And I feel there's not much training in the Gardaí around domestic abuse. And you're very lucky if you come across a guard that gets it and that, that understands. And I've come across one or two. And when they do get it and when they do understand this, they do give you their time and they'll go out of their way to give you their time. So they're not all bad, far from it. Look into your mother's face No one else can take her place Just as for birth, mother Oh Lord, hear my prayer Mary was a victim of domestic violence and coercive control. When her husband threw her out of the family home, the family court made an order that the children were to remain with their father. Eventually, she managed to escape to the UK with three of her children. When he tried to get the children back using the Hague Convention, a court in the UK named him as a major abuser and he was put on the Interpol list. Despite this, Mary has been unable to get her two younger children reunited with her. I was with my ex-husband for 18 years and he was extremely mentally and physically abusive. And I tried to leave him on several occasions, but stayed because he threatened suicide and all sorts of stuff in front of the children. So I stayed for a long time. He knew the marriage was over, and so in the end, he threw me out of the house in front of the children after he abused me in front of the children and physically assaulted me. And what happened after that has been a nightmare because essentially, when he threw me out of the house, he filmed himself throwing me out of the house and put it all over social media for my work colleagues. He never went to work and I was the breadwinner. After he threw me out, I went to work. I had fears for the children. And after work, I went back to the house with my two brothers and my stepfather. We discovered that he had the children locked in the house. He was there with them. They couldn't get away from him. I phoned the guards. The guards came eventually and the guards from day one had his back because they said to me, well, you need to go and let him calm down. You leave the house and go and stay with your parents for a couple of days and let it all calm down. 
It was the worst thing I ever did, because from that day forward, I looked like I was a mother who left my children. After I left, the abuse was actually getting worse and worse. He threatened to have me killed. He threatened to kill me on the local beach. I kept getting told by the Garda that this is just a family matter and it's not a criminal offence. When I was living with him, I got a barring order, but nothing was done with him when he broke it and moved back into the family home. I think it was because one of his siblings is a Garda. Every time his case was brought to the courts for domestic abuse, it was thrown out for stupid little reasons. I really believe that he had the protection of the courts because of his close connection to the guards. I asked for my new address not to be given to him by the guards and lo and behold, one day he turned up at my new address. So I felt very, very vulnerable. Ireland, Mother Ireland Let not the sins of the father Be visited on these children Justice for birth, mother, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. There's some evidence that individual Gardaí are abusing their power under Section 12. A man in the Midlands has initiated High Court proceedings against Ungardaí Síochána and the Minister for Justice in relation to an incident that occurred during lockdown in 2020. The man was at Sunday Mass with his children during lockdown when Garthi entered the church and attempted to clear it of mass scores. He filmed the incident on his phone and uploaded it to social media where it went viral. A few nights later, around 3am, the Garthi broke down the door to his house in the middle of the night and entered. They allegedly used their power under Section 12 of the Act to take the children into emergency care and their powers under the Mental Health Act to have the man removed to hospital. On his arrival at hospital, he was quickly assessed and discharged immediately because he had no mental health issues. He then went to the local guard station and was told that they had no idea where his children were. Over that weekend, he had no idea of their whereabouts. The man is claiming that the Gardaí abused their powers in retaliation for the video of them going viral on social media. In 2017, the Charlton Tribunal investigated possible collusion between Tusla and the Gardaí. Shortly after Morris McCabe began to blow the whistle on Gartha failure to prosecute penalty point offences, an allegation of digital rape of a young girl, Ms D, was recorded in 2013 against McCabe, even though no such allegation was ever made by anyone. Tusla wrote to Sergeant McCabe about the digital rape allegation and suggested he be assessed as to the threat he posed to children. The tribunal concluded that there was no collusion between the Gardaí and Thusla. It was merely a copy and paste error. Justice for Birth Mothers is a co-production between the Alliance of Birth Mothers Campaigning for Justice and M Compass Media. The podcast series received no funding and is made possible by a team of volunteers. Pseudonames have been used to protect the identities of the birth mothers. We're grateful to these mothers who shared their stories to highlight the ongoing state abuse of mothers by Tusla, Sumgardi and the family court system. Thanks also to the ladies who read the transcripts, which were very difficult for them, given the harrowing stories. Thank you for listening. And please share this podcast with your family, friends and contacts. Our next podcast examines the in-camera rule. Until next time, Banat de Arif Galeer. In the land where I was born, there are now women seeking justice. Justice for birth, mother, oh Lord.